Hey Wilder folks, Alicia here. This week's video is my top six exercises to do in the gym to get you ready for skiing. Now I've done this video concept before, but arguably for more advanced movements. Today's video is gonna be all about going back to the basics, and I promise you're gonna find it valuable whether you are a beginner or an expert on the slopes or in the gym. So without further ado, let's get into my top six exercises. And if you're looking for more help to get ready for the best ski season of your life, you should check out the link in the description below to join our online eight week pre-ski season fitness program. We've helped people from the Alps to the Rockies get ready for the best ski season of their lives. And it would be a privilege for me to be able to help you do the same. Exercise number one is a single leg balance. Now this is simple, but it is incredibly effective at waking up the intrinsic muscles of your feet, ankles, knees, and hips to keep you balanced, whether you're skiing on powder or ice. To do this one properly, you're going to want to start with one foot on its tippiest toe, the other foot spread wide with equal weight through the big toe and heel. You're going to lift that other foot off the ground without raising any hip up or letting it drop down and from the position you're simply going to balance now let's start with three sets of 10 to 60 seconds whatever you can do without having to touch down or start making massive movements with your body to stay balanced and if this gets too easy for you you can either add a band to add some resistance to the situation turning on your core more you can also close your eyes while you're doing it or have a friend pull on the other end of that band to really make this dynamic balance. Exercise number two is a rear foot elevated split squat. Now, even though skiing is a bipedal sport, meaning we're using both legs at once, your left leg and right leg are doing something wildly different depending on if it's your outside ski or inside ski. For that reason, single leg movements are incredibly important. Enter the rear foot elevated split squat. You're gonna to wanna to take three steps away from the bench or box or bottom stair that you're using to elevate your back foot. Then keeping your hips level, we're gonna sink down, turning on our core to keep our pelvis tilted slightly back and torso neutral. And then we're gonna come back up to the top. Now, as you get better at this movement, you can take it down lower and you can also add weights to either hand but you're gonna to wanna to work on your strength with this movement. So you're gonna be doing four to eight reps and you're gonna to wanna to be fully recovered before you start your next set. Exercise number three is our front lever Cossack squat. The reason I love these is because in the gym, we tend to neglect lateral movement and skiing is an incredibly lateral sport. To do this one, walk your feet wide enough that you just start to feel the first bit of a stretch through your groin. We're then gonna raise a very light weight up to shoulder height. No higher, no lower. We're gonna keep our shoulders low as we hold it out in front of us. From there, we're gonna sink sideways with our knee tracking over our second toe to go about a quarter of the way down and then come back up. It's important for this one not to sink the hips back, but rather try and take the bottom of your hip and bring it towards your opposite heel. Now the same as the rear foot elevated split squats, we'll start with sets of four to eight and make sure you're fully recovered from one set before you start the next. To progress this movement, you can sink lower into your Cossack squat and you can increase the amount of weight you're holding out in front of you. Exercise number three is a single leg lateral jump. Now this move is plucked from a protocol used to reduce ACL injuries in ski racers. I have an entire video on how to reduce your injury risk while skiing and I will link to that below. But one of the other reasons I love it is it's a great introduction into plyometrics which build bone density and build the strength of your tendons and ligaments. That being said, you're gonna to wanna to progress this slower than you would muscle-based movements because it takes longer for connective tissue to adapt to training. Now, I seriously recommend getting out your video camera and videoing yourself to avoid excessive knee movement to the inside or weird hip angles while you're jumping. Prioritize jumping technique before height or quantity. You're gonna to wanna to start with 10 sets of two jumps, making sure you stick the landing and ensuring that you're fully recovered before you start your next set. Now the sky is really the limit for progressing this 
movement. I love to do box jumps, so you are jumping forward to the side, to the back, to the side. Movement number five is lateral skater jumps. As a ski coach, one of the fastest ways I can get an athlete to improve is by getting them to put 90% of their pressure and weight on their outside ski when they're making a turn. This exercise helps us get into that position before we even click into our bindings. Now video is an incredible tool for these as well. As you can see, if you are stacking your hips, knees and ankles on that outside foot as you jump, and I typically coach clients to start this one well within their capacities before trying to push the limit of height or distance for these jumps. Similar to our single leg lateral jumps, I would start this one with 10 sets of two, making sure you're fully recovered in between jumps. And progressing this one can be super fun. Uh, to start with, you can just increase the number of jumps you do, but then as you get more confident, you can start jumping onto various surfaces, like onto a box and off of one, to increase the load that's going through those muscles, tendons, ligaments, and bones. And the final exercise we'll talk about today, number six, is our wall lean leg lift. I know it's a mouthful, but it is incredibly specific to skiing. What you're gonna wanna do is find a pole or a wall to rest your hand or elbow against, then keeping both hips pointed the same direction, you're gonna lean towards the wall. Do not let those hips turn and point across the room or dip towards the pole or wall. We wanna keep them parallel to whatever you're holding on to. From there, you're going to push through that outside leg nice and strong and then lift that inner foot towards your outside knee or right underneath your hip. We gotta get the right amount of lean here in order to feel this one in our core, and that's what we're aiming for, that isometric hold. I strongly suggest quality over quantity here. So only do as many as you can while keeping proper form and increase that number as you get stronger. And to make this one harder, you can increase the time you're holding or increase the depth of the movement. So time's a wasting. Take these movements into the gym, give them a try, let me know how they go, and subscribe to this channel if you want more fitness fueled by outdoor adventure. Have a wilder week and we'll talk to you guys soon.